Helping people to overcome the grip of addiction with the power of Jesus is the heart of Battelle. Through this church planting initiative that began in Madrid over 22 years ago, more than 100,000 addicts have been helped through Battelle communities in Europe, Africa, Asia and all over the world. Central to Battelle is the planting of churches. We want, we want to church plant, we want to turn men and women into men and women of God, but God has given us you know, marginalized people, drug addicts, alcoholics, homeless, immigrants, uh, single mothers. And so um, we, we're really looking for souls that res who respond to the gospel. We're working with people that finally have discovered they have a need. They've run into a wall, and we're the ones that pick them up off the ground. I was going on 19, and I got into a severe car accident, and it was because of my marijuana use. You know, um, I was smoking pot while driving home. Brian's story tells of the slippery slope of drug addiction, culminating in his discharge from the US Navy. Uh, one of the guys that was restricted with me um, was a cocaine user. And uh, he was getting cocaine on the ship and I started using cocaine with him. Um, I started uh, committing little crimes to support my cocaine addiction and I ended up uh, committing a robbery at a gas station and I was coming down off of a uh, cocaine rush <laughs> and I was panicking because I didn't know where I was going to get my next um, my next hit. I grabbed the baseball bat and I ran into a gas station to scare the attendant into giving me money so I can go get some drugs and uh, I scared him so much that he reached onto the counter. I thought he was reaching for a weapon and I hit him with the bat. Um, I ended up hitting him about three times in the head and, and once in the body. And I never did get any money. I ended up um, getting sentenced to eight years in prison for that crime. And uh, while in prison, I, um, I became addicted to heroin. We take anybody who comes who's willing to live in community, obey the rules, and as soon as they don't want to stay, they're allowed to leave. Only love and their own will can keep them. God is love, and if God dwells in us, us He loves them through us. And so when someone comes into, into Batel, he's immediately assigned a shadow, a friend, and who goes with him, follows him to the bathroom, stands outside the door while he goes to the toilet. And so you're never alone in Batel. And that's, that's an important part of community life having that person who's a little, doesn't matter if they're just one step ahead of you, but mm. enough to, uh, to be able to be responsible. We, we have a phrase, you know, you know the, the healed become the healers. And so it's a peer-driven, abstinence-based program. We believe that people can be free from life-controlling problems and that abstinence really is the answer and not to change the definition of freedom and make them slaves to another drug, but really to set them free. And, uh, and Battelle's having good success at that wherever we are in the world. If we can help them break from heroin addiction or alcohol abuse, um, very often that's been linked with tobacco use as a gateway drug to all the other things. So it's, it's, it's harsh, it's difficult when people first come in, but it's the best time to break those habits when you change your environment and, and, and your routine. So we're breaking every link in the chemical chain. Uh, the people go through withdrawal in the community. We don't have a two-stage program. and so. The addicts themselves accompany the new, you know, the ex-addicts come to the new addicts and they minister to them, they talk to them, say, I've been through that, you can do it, you can make it. Uh, and of course they receive, by giving grace, they receive grace themselves. And they can comfort much better than we can comfort. 
and they'll stay up all night with them and they'll watch and they'll take walks with them because they've been through it themselves. A Battel community is more like a home than a rehabilitation centre. It's not an institution, it's a family. Uh, and that's very one of the elements that we try very hard to, to maintain, a, an atmosphere of family, not an atmosphere of institution. Our family is Battel. Yeah. So we live together, we work together, we love and laugh together. We're not saying to anybody, come and live in our institution, we'll let you mm. live here. We say, come and be part of our family. Mm. Come and join it. It's, it's your house now. Each house centres around Jesus with an intensive discipleship program. We had five or six devotionals a week in the morning, three public meetings in the, in, uh, in the evenings a week, and maybe one evening evangelism out in the streets, uh, and then maybe two or three hours of Bible study for advanced people. It's like, it's like being in a seminary or a Bible school. It's an intensive way of uh, living together and growing in God. We have 80 ordained AEMC pastors. Of the 80 pastors, 56 are ex-heroin addicts and their wives. And I, some of them were, get, had no promise whatsoever in their lives. There was nothing to suggest that they would become great men and women of God. But today, 10, 15 years later, they're some of the greatest men of God I know because they've been transformed. I mean, Christ has become real in their lives. I was a drug addict for 11 years. I came to Bethel not really looking for Christianity or the gospel at all. I was looking for a solution on the addiction. And uh, through the ministry of Bethel and sharing the word every day and the, uh, the atmosphere, the style of life, the people involved there, the, it was an atmosphere of revelation of the cross of Jesus and Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that was what changed my life. I never be back to the same again. So we believe that the gospel can change people's life. It doesn't matter what background they have. And my whole life it was just me, me and me, and nothing else. And uh, once I began to know the Lord, I began to have a, a heart for others and to care and to have a desire to let them know there was a God there who loved them and have a plan and, and can change their lives. Those who just walked through the door, in the early years, we count, counted about 17% were standing for God you know, after a number of years. Those who have gone through the full year and a half program, about 90% are standing for God. Members of the Battel houses go to work in a wide variety of jobs, doing things from selling second-hand goods to restoring furniture and antiques and mowing lawns. In the working together, uh, Betelitos is what we call them, um, work out differences. They see God and find, you know, that God can work out differences between us as we work together. And so work, yeah, brought in the money, brought in the bread, daily bread, but it also brought in um, uh, a way to work out diff difficulties and problems between us. Mm. It, uh, it also gave a person a, a responsibility and a feeling of I, I'm doing something worthy. You know, and so work was important. Providing work not mm. only to help fund Battelle, but really mm. to help develop a work ethic. It's therapeutic uh, in the lives of the men and women. It's one of the great needs of their lives. Most of them have never worked. They've been dependent on welfare all their lives. And we move by faith. We, we don't have the, the resources necessary for any of the advances. We live right on the edge all the time. It's not only among the attic culture that Battelle is seeing people turn to Jesus. A social ministry that demonstrates radically changed lives and living compassion uh, touches people's hearts. The hardest people cannot deny a radically changed life. And so when they see Battelle, they see the people in their changed lives, they see the, the order of our stores and our businesses, and they see the churches and the beauty of the holiness in our lives and the worship, uh, they take notice. It's been a catalyst to start a church in gospel resistant Europe, we clone off a piece of a community. We'll, we will take usually one van and five, six, eight people. We give them, you know, a, a little bit of money. We usually give them calendars, posters, evangelistic material. Uh, we, they go and they find a place to rent, to live in. They distribute the literature. They start to do odd jobs. They sell their calendars. We usually look for an office and a thrift store. 
and that clone community is a, is, a, is a living community. The program works in India because we started right at the very beginning with a team of men we sent from Europe and uh, they were men that had had their lives changed by the power of Christ, that worked that out in a practical way in Battelle centres here in Europe and they taught young men to do the same thing in Asia. It's always been our vision uh, to not only help people but eventually to transmit the missionary heart that we have to them so that they can go out and likewise uh, be examples and help other people. And Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so we're going into all the world. So we have never had a local church vision. We've never been interested in planning one church. We're looking for, you know, an Antioch or an Ephesus. We want to see mega churches that are able to, you know, project the, uh, the gospel well beyond the local church. Uh, it may sound ambitious, it may sound crazy, but after 20 years, it really does work. I'd like to see the town every major urban center of the earth. And I like to believe that the, you know, this, these two decades, maybe three decades, that I can really be involved in it, actively and executively in Battelle will just be the first fruits.